If you're unfamiliar, this is Gene Bailey on the left. It's uh, Lance Walnaw on the right. These two people are absolutely out of their minds on Jesus and Trumpism. They are Christian nationalists, and they believe that God chose Trump to be blah, 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 whatever, some special guy, the Messiah, whatever. I don't even know. Anyway, they're doing election coverage right now, Super Tuesday. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what's happening at this moment in time, let me just give you a little information on it. We're going into the 2024 elections. The Republican and Democratic primaries are taking place right now. Nikki Haley just announced that she's dropping out of the race like an hour ago or two hours ago or something this morning. Super Tuesday ended and Nikki Haley didn't have enough wins to justify staying in. I thought for sure that she was just going to stay in because she's going to be the backup candidate just in case Trump dies or something. I thought for sure that was going to be like her choice, but no, I guess not. Anyway, Super Tuesday went to Trump. Obviously, Donald Trump won on Super Tuesday, and now he's the candidate for Republicans, as I expected him to be. But let's listen to their coverage. Well, Trump's like for three. Oh, look, we got Michelle Bachman and Hank Kuhneman on here, too. This is bound to be interesting. And while we listen, we're going to play some Mario Bros. Yeah, it just should just be in the background. Won't bother you too much if you never played it before. Just kind of run around, jumping, doing whatever. So let's listen to these people talk about how great Trump is. Straight into election coverage in the spirit of faith with America stands as soon as Flashpoint is over. Uh, and if you have a problem... And we're going to talk about this. There were some issues on social media today. You can always watch us at govictory.com slash flashpoint. Dude, these people are perpetual victim. There are some issues on social media today. Uh, I'm guessing that they literally wished death upon Joe Biden and or told people to actually go out and do something psychotic. And they got banned from YouTube for it, like for doing that. That's my guess at worst. But uh, they're perpetual victims. They're always talking about how victimized they are by the media. Just insane, dude. Come on. Anyway, all right. Let, let's listen to these people cry about how they're perpetually mistreated. Oh. And rumble.com slash flashpoint. Those are two places working. So join us. Hey, while they're shouting out uh, their places, why don't you check out my book? Owenmorgan.com slash book. I would appreciate that very much. I'm super excited about the book. I hope you guys appreciate it. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy the book as much as I enjoyed writing the book. It's about Jehovah's Witnesses. Working title is Understanding Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's about their doctrine and my experience with them and what they're right about and what they're wrong about. Some famous Jehovah's Witnesses and their histories and things like that. It's I think it's pretty interesting. So check that out. I also have a second book that's based on the first. It's the last chapter of the first book. It's called A Hundred Questions for Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's about 60 pages long. So give that a read if you want to. I'd appreciate it. Uh, over there if you lose us for some reason. Let me welcome our guest tonight, star-studded panel, Lance Wallnow back, Pastor Hank Kuhneman, Rick Green, and the very... To bring the level up of the room, uh, Michelle Bachman, thank you, everybody, for joining. If you don't know Michelle Bachman, she used to be a congressman. Absolutely psychotic. She was part of, I believe, she's part of what's called the Tea Party. And it was like the predecessor to the QAnon type of extremist nutcase, that, that type of deal. Joining uh, tonight, this Dear. banner evening. So let me get right down to it. Right off the top, uh, you know, we were looking for... Uh, some results to start coming in, but it looks like North Carolina and Virginia have already been called, Lance, for... Yeah, everything went to Trump, except for maybe, I think, Vermont went to Nikki Haley, which, as I said, dropped out of the race. But Nikki Haley made history, and so did Trump. Nikki Haley was the very first woman to ever win a state in a Republican primary. She won Vermont. That's interesting, right? And Trump made history by being the very first man to lose a state in the Republican primary to a woman. So congratulations to Trump, too. Congratulations to both of them. Uh, Donald Trump. What do you 
Oh, she also won, uh, Nikki Haley won D.C., but D.C. isn't a state. What do you think we're going to see tonight? Well, I think you're going to see an interesting story about rural America. I think there's 2,000 some counties that are going to be rural America. Right. And we're going to see, of course, they're going to try to make this the college educated people versus the rest of, I guess the implication is dumb America. Who is they? It sounds like that's what Lance Walnut is doing. He, he's trying to make it about dumb America v. college educated America. Like, what? There's another way to beat that level, isn't there? Do, do I get something different if I beat it that way? Yeah, all right. Let's just go to the ghost, ghost house. I could have beaten the game a long time ago. I just wanted to beat every single level. I'm thinking I'm going to hit this, uh, this, uh, you know, this castle here, and then I'm going to go to the ghost house. And so the college-educated areas is where Nikki Haley is hoping to score an upset primarily, what, is it in Virginia? They're looking for those, mostly in the D.C. suburbs and the area around D.C., which we know is the swamp area. So the Republicans there. Oh, my God, dude. He, these people are shameless. If you do spiritual. Look, these people are the swamp. We talk about the swamp. You wonder who the swamp is. You want to know who the corruption kind of circles around in the United States. You want to know who is corrupt? These people. It's these people. And Donald Trump, they are the swamp. They are the scumbags in the system who are trying to corrupt it and turn it to something that's valuable to them rather than uh, valuable to like all of society. Seriously, it, it, it is insane to me that they have somehow like convinced a bunch of gullible suckers that they are like what like Lance Walna is the honest good guy in the equation. Just looking out for people's best interests. Insane. Mapping, they'll be the most unusual and outlier counties in the country because they don't represent the majority of Americans. Well, but I'm it's looking to see how... Well, they do represent the majority of Americans. They don't represent the majority of land in America. That's why gerrymandering is so important for um you know uh, republicans to win anything they must modify the districts to give themselves an advantage and that's what's happened the vast majority of america votes democrat the majority of texas votes democrat but they've split the districts up in such a way that it will probably never be Democrat. It will always go Republican because of how they split it. Donald Trump. I want to see how Donald Trump has reshaped the party because we got to compare this to, you know, to 2020 and 2016. Right. I think you're going to see he has totally rewritten the uh, the playbook for the Republicans. No. I, I agree with that. Trump has definitely rewritten the playbook for the Republicans. I believe you're. Oh, my God. This is a really confusing ghost house. Got it. No, no. Oh, I almost had it. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, my God. I got it. That is a really hard thing to do. Holy Christ, is that difficult. I don't think I even need to do that. I just wanted to beat it the special way. That was really good. Okay, let's continue. You're right. Uh, let's go to Virginia when Michelle Bachman, you're right there. Were you surprised Virginia to go so quickly tonight? I mean, I wasn't surprised that Trump won... Every, nearly everything except for like Vermont and a couple like DC and stuff. I wasn't surprised by that at all. Were these people surprised by that? Of course, Donald Trump is going to win the primary. Of course, he's the chosen guy for the, uh, you know, the, the, the Republican primary or whatever. Of course he is. You really didn't like realize, but this should show you something. The fact that Nikki Haley won a state and she's consistently been getting about 40% of the vote is a sign that the Republican Party wants to move on, I think. I, th I think it's a pretty clear sign. Well, uh, no, in many ways. However, all of the pundits talked about Virginia, that that actually might be the only state where Nikki Haley has a chance, but clearly that's not going to happen. If you go to rural Virginia, as Lance had said, clearly there's no question it is Trump country. 
But I think what we've seen is that people have taken the measure of this race and they've made up their minds. They've made up their decision. So it seems pretty clear to me that the voters, Gene, know who they want for their right. nominees for the Republican side, Donald Trump, for the Democrat, Joe Biden. Uh, all right. Uh, Rick Green, I'll get you to weigh in here before we move on. Um, that seems like it to me, too. Yes. But again, Trump does not have the mandate to lead that everybody thought that he might. The Republican Party is very split right now, unexpectedly split. Your thoughts about yeah, that? I think we're definitely seeing the result of, of uh, the, the, the nation saying we've got to stop this lawfare. We've got to stop this. Too uh, dude, I love it that these people are taking this as a W like, oh, check it out. Our guy won. They should really be taking this as an L. They should be recognizing this as the loss that it is. Really? Trump didn't get 90 percent of the vote. I would have thought that Trump would get 90% of the vote. Kind of blows me away. And it and it blows me away that they're not a little more worried about it than they are, considering the fact that Nikki Haley got 45% of the vote or something like that. Two-tier justice system. The Republican Party has rallied behind Donald Trump. I, I think that is the number one factor. And uh... yes, the part like the the media, Fox News. The Republican media has rallied behind Donald Trump. Fox News has, yes, absolutely. Um, that is a factor. In fact, it's probably the primary factor in why Trump won. If Republican media gave up on Donald Trump, stopped talking about the dude completely, Trump wouldn't win another election. He wouldn't win another primary. He's winning because the Republican Party is sticking with him. Because they're afraid that he's going to break off into a brand new political party if they say a word against him, which they're probably right about. Uh, and, and it's like, you know, my co-host over at American Family Association, Walker Wadman, said today, he said, Rick, if, if that doesn't happen, we're going to normalize the persecution of people for political reasons. Going to normalize the persecution of people for political reasons. Come on. Really? So the stakes are incredibly high here, and, and that's why I think this, this tremendous victory for Trump in state after state after state is important because it kind of puts a you know puts a stamp on that on that very issue. And uh, as we mentioned last night here on Flashpoint, you know Nikki Haley. Hey, he's got the same microphone as me. Haley's probably only going to be the choice of the swamp, and and that's to be expected. Of course, they hate Donald Trump. He's the worst nightmare for the swamp. And right, the swamp totally. The swamps, the ones that are voting for Trump, the ones that are completely incorruptible are the ones voting for Donald Trump and the swamp is the ones that are voting for Nikki Haley. Absolutely. That checks out. In all seriousness, it's probably the other way around. Sammy the Bull Gravano murdered like 30 people, admitted to it, and was a rat for the mafia and was a rat, ratted out a whole bunch of people and got like 12 years instead of life for ratting on his co-conspirators and taking helping take down the mafia that guy called trump incorruptible quote unquote trump's incorruptible what a joke dude and uh, get ready because their nightmares coming <laughs> that's true all right so if you were paying attention today you noticed this morning no matter where you were in america that your social media may have gone down and of course, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I thought they were going to turn this into a big persecution thing. I remember this. Yeah. Social media went down. Like, like all social media. Like, YouTube was down for, like, I don't know, an hour at like six o'clock in the morning or something. Facebook was down. Instagram was down. Everything was down. My guess is because they all probably use AWS or they all use Azure services or something, you know, Microsoft's version of AWS and the parent system went down like AWS went down or something. I don't know for sure. Um, but I do, you know what I do know for sure? These people are going to spin a conspiracy out of it. I can just about guarantee that. You know what happens? It hits the wire. So look at this graphic, Andy Stone, where, where people are having trouble accessing our services. We're working on this. And of course you see, uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, it was the one that uh, was able to weather the, the, the storm the, the best. But it wasn't just Facebook. Look at the rest of them. It's Facebook, Instagram. Wait, so you're telling me that, like, 
Twitter handled this situation like they they didn't have to deal with any of the uh, like the outages or whatever. Do you think maybe that might be because they use like Azure services instead of uh, instead of like AWS? It could it has to be because Elon is more competent, right? Couldn't be because they just use different services. Must be a competence thing. Totally, absolutely. God, these people live in like another reality, don't they? My God. Facebook Messenger, YouTube, Google Play, T-Mobile, Google Threads, and Twitter actually did take a hit uh, from all of that. Uh, you know, so this was a big deal. Elon Musk. Oh, so, <laughs> wow. So Twitter did take a hit. What, what was all that about Twitter being the best and Twitter weathering the storm and all that? Was that just like made up? Like what? And Twitter actually did take a hit uh, from all of that. Uh, you know, so this was a big deal. Elon Musk, this is the... Tweet of the day here, Lance. Look at this. Uh, actually, I'll go to Hank, Pastor Hank, on this. Elon Musk says, uh, <laughs> if you're reading this post, it's because our servers are working. Pastor Hank. Uh, what I mean, wait, so he's just like gloating, I guess, is the point? Okay, great. Elon Musk gloats. Big surprise. What do you think about all of this, the social media uh, coming down like it has? Well, but you know what? The number one true social didn't go down either that's right. so it's obvious that's because they probably use different servers like different um different background systems i'm assuming that they all use aws is my guess honestly i'm kind of like surprised that google doesn't have their own kind of um aws type of setup i thought that they would have their own setup for that by now but Obvious that, but if you don't know what AWS or Azure is, they're virtual servers. So they have gigantic data centers with things called racks, and they're just they're they're things about this big, and you can slide a system in, slide a motherboard, a hard drive, and uh, you know a RAM and a CPU and everything. You just slide it in, real nice and neat. And you can get like 50 racks and you can line them all up and they all fit really, really well. And you can very easily, if there's a problem, pull one of the racks out, open it, pull out the memory, put new memory in and slide it back in. That's how data centers are, are managed. It makes it all very simple and straightforward. And you can also use like overarching systems to kind of tell if there are any problems with any specific I mean, data center managers deal with these things all the time. Um, my, my brother actually handled this for Google. Google does have data centers like this. But AWS, Amazon Web Services, I believe is what it stands for, is basically that. It's a gigantic thing full of data centers where it allows you to create virtual instances of computers basically it, it it lets you customize how much ram you want your system to have and how much hard drive space you can expand the hard drive space or decrease it it makes it super simple and it's commonly used for things like um you know twitter parlor um google youtube because youtube never knows just how much traffic they're gonna get YouTube one day could get 50 million users. Well, we'll say they get 50 million users in a month. And the following month, YouTube gets like 2 billion users, just like seemingly out of nowhere. And having like all of those servers on and enabled just in case they get that, that kind of like um, that kind of traffic is a waste of power and time and, and everything. So AWS, virtual systems, is like the perfect solution to this. That's basically how it works, and that's why people use AWS. Azure is the Microsoft version. AWS runs Microsoft systems or Linux systems or whatever other system. Azure runs Microsoft specifically, and it runs Microsoft systems very, very well. Partic like better than AWS because it's customized for Windows systems specifically like C sharp, 
uh, VB, ASP.net, that kind of thing. Anyway, that's how the infrastructure works. So Amazon and Microsoft and a couple of other companies run these gigantic data centers, you know, uh, hundreds of them all over the place, and they allocate processing power and memory and hard drive space where it needs to be allocated. You know, one month you get people uploading, God, I don't even know what numbers YouTube is working with, but let's say people upload two hours of footage for every 30 minutes or two hours of footage every 30 minutes to, to YouTube's system. And then one month they suddenly upload, you know, um, 15 hours of footage every 30 minutes. Well, they can very easily just add extra hard drive space that they weren't using before. They can just allocate new hard drive space to YouTube if they need it. So anyway, sorry, a long explanation probably, but I, I just want to like explain why this is happening. AWS, the parent system, probably went down or Azure or something. This is, who knows what these people are up to. They've been about censorship. They've been about can. Oh, they, yeah, this is censorship. Totally, totally. Sen they're censoring everybody. That's the problem. Canceling. They've been about trying to manipulate our freedom of speech. So it's not a surprise that you see freedom of speech versus that which is trying to shut it down. I'm sorry? What? What does this have to do with, with freedom of speech or whatever? What the hell are these people talking about? And uh, it'll be interesting. I'm sure that they're going to hide it and conceal uh, really what the reason was. But obviously there was a reason. And did you notice? No, there will be a postmortem. There's always a postmortem with this stuff. That's what they call it. I've written postmortems before. Postmortem is just an explanation of what happened and why it happened and how they can avoid it in the future. Steps that they can take. Concrete steps they can take to prevent something like this from happening in the future. You know, anytime there's like an issue or whatever, you write a postmortem. There will be a postmortem. Like anytime there's a hack or anything, there's a postmortem. I currently have no reason to believe that this is the result of a hack. I, I just think like some of their systems went down for one reason or another. Pastor Gene, the exact. You know what? We may actually already know what happened. I, just out of curiosity, let's see. Um, why was there a social media outage? This is in 2021. What caused the outages one day ago? Okay, they were down Tuesday after 9 a.m. Central Time. Users were either unable to load new posts or were logged out and unable to log back in. It's weird because that's not reflected in my YouTube numbers. I don't think unless, well, maybe it is. I don't know. It's really hard. It's hard to tell. Like, I don't know exactly what time it was. Okay, like, I can see a dip on both of my channels at the same time. Yes, 3 p.m., no, yeah, 3 a.m. I see a dip on, on all of my channels, and then a jump, and then another dip, and then it slowly started coming back up, and then 1 p.m. yesterday, there was another dip, an unexpected dip, and then it came back up. So, yeah, thank you for explaining AWS. Yeah, of course. There was a mass DNS problem with AWS. Trust me, it's been a hell morning. Oh, I bet. I bet. So it sounds like, what, a DNS issue? Oh, God. Imagine being the guy. The guy. The one person who caused it. Oh, my God. I remember one time. Okay, so just to get back to it, I'm not exactly sure, but there will be an explanation if there isn't already. There's probably already an explanation. I remember one time um, I was a server admin, a young server admin for a company. And this company, um, they were web developers and I was managing the server for them, the servers, plural, for them. And um, I was making changes to IP tables. I shouldn't have been using IP tables. That's like the base program used for you know, b blocking people or whatever. That's like, usually people don't write their own firewalls. They usually use IP tables and they modify or, and they like create an interface for it and stuff. IP tables is like the core 
basic command line thing that people use to create firewalls and stuff. So anyway, I was using IP tables directly instead of using an interface for it, as I should have been. And I accidentally locked the entire office out of our servers. <laughs> it, it felt like skydiving. It was, it was like, oh my God, dude, my heart starts pumping. Adrenaline goes through my system. I go white. Oh, it was scary. Uh, I got it back up within like 45 seconds. <laughs> it wasn't that long, but it, it was long enough for somebody to say, hey, what's going on? I can't access this website, <laughs> you know? And I was like, holy shit. Like, oh man, it was scary. It was scary. Imagine being the guy that took down Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, threads, Twitter, everything. Imagine being that person that accidentally took it down. Oh, God, you got to feel for him. I wonder who it was. I wonder what happened. Like I said, there'd be a postmortem. We'll figure it out. I'll tell you what, it, it wasn't, though, and I know this for sure. It was not God smiting people or punishing people or whatever the hell this guy believes. Day, Super Tuesday. Oh, no, it just happened. So you know what? It smells like the dirty rats they are. Ah, so uh, I see. So it happened on Tuesday morning, I guess, 9 central time. And apparently social media going down was the deep state trying to hide Trump's victory on Super Tuesday. That checks out. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah, it does. All right, Lance, you know, I get your take on this, but you know, it's just not even two weeks ago. We had the cell phone outage. Less than a year ago, we had uh, airports ground to a halt because of a software issue. Um, I don't remember a cell phone outage. And yeah, there was a software issue. So airports came to a halt. I remember that. That was like a year ago or something. What, what's the implication? There's a QAnon belief that there's going to be a 10-day um, period of darkness where... We won't be able to communicate with each other through the internet or something. The internet's going to go down for this long period of time. That was like, it's like a QAnon prophecy, basically. I'm wondering, are they like alluding to that or? Uh, what do you, what do you make of all this, Lance? The only thing I can think of is it's unusual, isn't it? That it's a war of words and I don't want to uh, over-spiritualize this, but you got to remember that. I don't want to over-spiritualize it. You shouldn't be spiritualizing this at all. Some dude probably typed... He was probably working in IP tables directly instead of using interface firewall software and locked everybody out of the system. Luckily, I had... I was working from home when all of that stuff happened to me originally, so I whitelisted my home system so that I could like my home IP address so I could work on the servers from home and I had a server at home just a little tiny server you know Linux server so I SSH'd into my home server and then SSH'd into the other server like my work server from my home server and cleared the IP tables rule that locked everybody out it, like I said 45 seconds but oh boy, it was like skydiving for a minute there. There's a mobile network outage recently on AT&T's network. Okay, I didn't hear about that. Surprising. Okay. AT&T went down for a bit weekend before last. I have um and I have an AT&T carrier. It's Cricket. And I didn't even notice. So that's interesting. Weird. The the battle of the last days is going to be the battle of voices. And so if your voice is saying what the uh people in the elite tech community don't want to hear, you can expect there's going to be interruptions, disruptions, and dis it's almost like, remember... What, are you kidding me? He says, I don't want to spiritualize this too much. And then he says, if you're saying things that the elites don't want you to hear, you can expect there to be disruptions and interruptions. Were they taken down specifically and nobody else? I mean, I can see a dip on my system, and I am in support of who one might call the elites. Like what? When everything went blank while we were covering the 2020 election and right. suddenly you know, the vote stopped. Well, what was that? that I don't know what the hell he's talking. The votes 
stopped in 2020? No, that didn't happen. What? That was a media controlled intervention. So a media controlled intervention. Uh, Super Tuesday is imagine what it's going to be like come election day. Uh, this is a, this is like the canary in the coal mine. Will that the is. social media tech companies allow the American people to have equal participation in expressing their opinion? If they don't oh, look, you're free to express your opinion to your heart's content. You are not necessarily free to use truth social. Donald Trump has a right to ban you from that. If you don't like that fact, then change it. Make it so Donald Trump is forced to host Joe Biden on his platform. These people don't want to... Look, if you have it one way, you have to have it both ways. If you protect Trump, you have to protect YouTube and vice versa. These people don't want that. They want supremacy. They want access to this stuff while being allowed to ban whoever or kick whoever off that they want. Insane. They don't like the opinion. They want to silence it. Well, what, like whose opinion was silenced the other morning by a social media outage specifically? And by the way, you can write any book you want. I wrote a book. People can write books and they can publish them basically for free with print on demand. You can publish a book for free. And we're not hearing a word about the reasons why. Uh, or, you know, they're not Again, like I, I'm sure that there's already an explanation out. I just didn't feel like finding it. Probably DNS related issue as far as I could see. Who knows? I mean, come up with a, well, this is what happened and we're fixing it. It's just been radio silent. Uh, this comes on the day after, of course, the Supreme Court decision that uh, nine to zero President Trump. Ad Oh, dude, listen to these conspiracies. Oh, my God, this is crazy. I'm going to play. Let's see. What are we going to play? I want to play something fast. Let's do N64. I got to be honest with you guys. Mario Kart for the Nintendo 64 sucked. It was an absolutely awful game. There's nothing good about that game. But you know what? We'll play it. You have fond memories because it was like the game you rented for the weekend or whatever, and you had to enjoy it. It actually sucked. But let's play it for a couple of minutes while we listen to these nutter butters spread nutter buttery all over everything. Okay, now let, listen to their conspiracy theories here. Uh, or, you know, they're not come up with a, well, this is what happened and we're fixing it. It's just. He's talking about a postmortem. I'm sure there'll be a postmortem. It's been radio silent. Uh, this comes on the day after, of course, the Supreme Court decision that uh, nine to zero President Trump. I, let me ask you this, Michelle Bachman. Do you think that had any effect on uh, the vote today? Again, more conspiracy theories. These people are a joke. Michelle Bachman, do you think that had any effect on uh, the vote today? I think it did. I think people knew what they were going to do when they went into the voting booth. I don't think there were a lot of question marks. But again, Donald Trump has had an incredible week to have a nine to zero opinion come out of the Supreme Court and settle this issue once and for all. Yeah, that was good for him. Uh, nine to zero Supreme Court opinion that gave Trump the choice uh, or that made it so that Colorado is not allowed to remove him from the ballot. That was an extremely good um, outcome for Donald Trump. Uh, I don't know why, like, Sotomayor and Kagan and uh, Katanji Brown Jackson's on there now, right? Who did um, Jackson replace? Do you remember? My wife's back there, but she's occupado. She would know who Katanji Brown Jackson replaced. Anyway, I wonder why they voted for that. Like, for, for Donald Trump to be allowed on the Colorado ballot. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Like, ultimately, Donald Trump is, is not going to win Colorado anyway. He's going to lose that state to Joe Biden because it's a blue state. It's always been a blue state. It's a blue stronghold. So I guess the real question is, are Republicans or are Democrats okay with setting the precedent that people can be removed from ballots for being insurrectionists. Because the moment that door opens, Republicans will be using it against their political opponents. Democrats will be 
marked as insurrectionists for for literally everything. That's why I'm assuming that the Supreme Court decided nine to zero to make them put Trump on the ballot in um, in Colorado. This was election interference by secretaries of state across the country. We've seen election interference from my perspective in 2016, in 2020. We've, there's been quite Breyer, Breyer, that's who Katanji Brown Jackson replaced. That's right. Thank you for that. Questions of the deep state and their activities involved in election interference. So to me, I look at what happened today with shutdowns on social media. There were not shutdowns on social media. OK, it was an outage and it was probably like an AWS outage or something like, my God, these people can't help but to like live in conspiracy land, can they? What is it like to live in conspiracy land like this 24-7? What, what do you think that's like? Do you think, it, do you think it's fun or do you think it's just like terrible? Other than conveniently Truth Social and a few others. And this just tells me again that it's saying... Wow, convenient. Truth Social wasn't taken down. Huh. Interesting. Curious. You think maybe that could be a sign that the deep state is actually working for Trump? God, these people have conspiracy brain like you wouldn't believe. Same song, second verse. We're dealing with this deep state or other bad actors, and it's election interference. They have one outcome in this election, and that's to ensure that Donald Trump is not the president of the United States. Then why wouldn't they take down Truth Social or whatever instead of the twit? Or whatever they took down. Why did Facebook go down instead of Truth Social? Like, what? Their conspiracies don't even make sense. Victorious the first Tuesday of November in 2024. And so whatever means necessary, I believe they will deploy. But that's where, Gene, the counterbalance of the body of Christ with the power of prayer and fasting, I believe, has right. already impacted this election. And we'll Oh, I guess she's been doing fasting and prayer, and that has influenced this election already. Wow, okay. We'll continue to do Is that election interference? Fasting and prayer? Sounds like it to me. Do so, and we're going to stand strong. The Flashpoint Army isn't going to give up. We're not giving in. The deep right. state isn't more powerful than a holy God, so we're going to stand strong. And we Get help, people. I'm begging you. We are standing strong, but as you know, liberals on the left are quite upset about this. And there's one thing about social media when it, I am? it does work, people take advantage of this sort of thing. Watch. Um, you know, look, unfortunately for America, the court ne isn't necessarily wrong that this is the way the framers wanted it to be. They wanted Congress. The people I would love it if they didn't have Donald Trump playing the violin in the background. That'd be great. What are they? I don't under like wh wh what's happening. I don't understand. Is this real? Did this really happen on CNN? Unfortunately for America, the court ne isn't necessarily wrong that this is the way the framers wanted it to be. They wanted Congress, the people who are closest to their constituents, to be able to make the, the rules of the laws. That doesn't change the fact that because of gerrymandering in the House and all kinds of other issues. Did somebody p pop this meme up of Trump playing the violin? Is that like what happened? Like, I can't I can't tell if this is real. They have a uh, little thing that says mainstream media plays what mainstream media plays a sorrowful tune on Trump decision. I don't. Is that a joke or what? I don't know. Um, they're not doing their job on a lot of these big issues. Yeah. All right. Pastor Hank, did you do that? Did you make that video? Uh, there was a cat. Uh, it was cat turd. Probably there's a Twitter account called cat turd. Very famous. Uh, what do you call it? Like uh right-wing social media influencer on the twit he gets retweeted by trump all the time and shouted out by trump and interviewed by the most famous trumpists and so on and so forth um cat turd does 
So I think Cat Turd probably had somebody make that meme for him. That's my guess. <laughs> no, I did not, but I hear that famous song, Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. Their feelings are hurt, but it's okay. <laughs> They're going to get over it. You know, listen, Pastor Gene, we shared last night on Flashpoint the prophetic word that the Lord gave February night at Andrew Omax, Colorado. They would become Colorado do. They would do what God said. Then you saw the Secretary of the Deep State get on after the Supreme Court ruling. Wait, Secretary of the Deep State? Who's Secretary of the Deep State? Every single time I think it's a final lap, I always end up doing another lap. I'm, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, who is he talking about here, I wonder? And she begins to manifest. Well, God said it would be overturned. Sunday, before it even was being talked about that they were going to rule the Supreme Court on Monday, the Spirit of God began to prophesy at our Sunday morning service and said that the Supreme ruling would come so this dude is claiming that God gave him this information ahead of time. Very quickly, and that God was going to get involved with it, and that he would laugh through it, and they would be angry at the outcome, but God was standing with his man. I want to say this last thing uh, about Super Tuesday. I think you're going to see something. I think you're going to see two components. They, they've been calling people Christian nationalists, but I think you're going to see Super natural. You see the super, which is the God factor that is coming and interjecting to Michelle's point because of the prayers and the fasting of the people. But something in the natural, it's we the people. What Lance says, the populist movement who have had right. enough are letting their voices be heard. And uh, God and country together are going to absolutely bring a reset. And uh, it's for this present generation and for generations to come fascinating oh my god dude uh so jasa says justice jackson katanji brown jackson her concurring opinion disagreed with the court in saying they went too far although we agree that colorado cannot enforce section three i assume of the 14th amendment which you know bans somebody from running for president if they've committed an insurrection i believe that's what it is uh, Colorado cannot enforce Section 3. I assume that means that they believe that it should be the federal government that enforces it. We protest the majority's one half. He's talking about Griswold, Secretary of State. Okay, that makes more sense. Interesting. Amen. All right, well, you, you saw during the COVID nightmare uh, how the mainstream media responded. In fact, they read off, it looked like the same teleprompter all right. Anyway, yeah, I guess I'm going to call it there. That, that is absolutely insane, dude. Let me know what you think about these people in the comments. This is shameless, man. These people are perpetual victims. They will find any reason to label themselves victims. It's a problem. Republicans could walk into a voting room and set fire to all the Democrat votes, and it would just be someone exercising their constitutional rights. Democrat could sneeze in the voting room, and they would accuse Democrats of trying to use biological warfare against them. Oh, absolutely. That's 100% true, yes. All right, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to call it there. Thanks so much for coming. Check out my book, owenmorgan.com slash book. All right, have a good one, everybody. Thanks, thanks for coming, Miracle. See you tomorrow.